where do we even begin? Hi, I'm Megan Batoon. I have absolutely no scientific backing to this. I'm just going off a of feeling. So I was talking to my friend the other day about losing inspiration and I was trying to figure out how to get it back. Mind you, I've been trying to figure out how to get it back for about two years now. Across the board for everybody, it's a normal thing, whether you are a creative as well, or if you're trying to lose weight, or if you're trying to just reach a certain goal, inspiration sucks when it's not here. But when it's here, there's nothing better. Inspiration is like a family member that you always want to come over and your doors are always open for them, but you have no idea when they're going to come. They just knock, 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 here I am. And you have to drop everything you're doing and cater directly to them. And by the time that you recalibrate your week in order to accommodate them, their bags are packed and they're already out of the door. See ya, thanks for stopping by. Would love a heads up next time. I think I've also one time described inspiration as the most elusive Pokemon. You're never gonna catch it all. The reason why I wanted to make this video is just to talk about it. I don't know if I can teach you anything, I don't know if it's going to be helpful, but at least you know that other people are going through it. A lot of people that you watch on YouTube are probably going through it as you're watching them. And maybe that's comforting enough to know that everyone that looks like they have it together, everyone on social media, which I'll get into that, we're all trying to figure it out. Doing specific things that you have to do is so much harder than doing things that you want to do. Everything is harder to function when you don't want to do it. So many times that I've lost inspiration, I try and pinpoint where my lack of desire is coming from. And I think more importantly than discerning where the lack of desire is coming from is taking a look at the fact that in and of itself, you don't want to do something. Maybe it's because your hobby has become your job and therefore your livelihood. Maybe it's because you think what you're doing doesn't matter. Maybe it's because you feel like you're putting in more than you're getting out. It could be a million reasons. The cool thing to look at is that success isn't a one-way street, nor is it paved very well. Got a lot of bumps on this road. <laughs> if you are hitting a speed bump or a roadblock, that means you're reaching a part of the road that you haven't yet gotten to before. So just knowing and expecting that you're going to have these little hiccups and almost welcoming them because as soon as you reach one of those, you know that you're going further and getting closer to what you ultimately want. Also, we gotta stop comparing ourselves. I've stopped looking as much as I used to at least at social media because it's become just a web of comparisons. And don't get me wrong, I love social media, but it's not conducive to when you feel uninspired because you're going to be comparing yourselves to people's end result. Everything that's posted online is processed and packaged. Social media is like the hot dogs of protein. You think people don't think about what they're posting online? You wouldn't post something that you weren't proud of. You wouldn't post something that you think is unfinished. I guess it's like a presentation. You're almost like, this is what I want you to see. But up until that point, none of it was ready for show and tell. That's what they want you to see. How many breakdowns happened until then? How many times did they have to push through hardship to get to that point? That's just the end result. Where's the documentation of everything that happened between then? It's here and here. All right, stop comparing, moving on. If you're in an inspirational rut and you have the luxury of taking a break, take a break. If you don't have the luxury of taking a break, figure out a way to take a break. I remember a few years ago, I basically chose my career over anything else. And that was detrimental to my relationships. It was detrimental to myself. It was detrimental to my current state of the work that I was putting out. I didn't realize the effect of what I was doing until it affected me. I thought working harder and longer than everybody else would benefit me and look really cool. And like, whoa, she's unstoppable. She needed to be stopped. I'm sure there's a plethora of positive benefits that came out of it, but no positive effect is worth burning out. And everyone burns out at some point. Breaks are necessary. We need time to reset ourselves and stop the constant stimulation. We need a break. Without proper breaks and care of yourself, you will go nowhere. How can you rev up if you're burnt out? You're putting yourself further back, the more breaks that you give up. And if you think that taking a break is going to put you further behind, you're never gonna get to the finish line because you won't have energy if you just keep pushing through. The other day I took my work team to an escape room and at the end I asked the gamekeeper to give us feedback because classic me taking something that should be fun and trying to put an entrepreneurial spin on it. He was like, you guys should finish one puzzle before going on to another one because we would get stuck on something and then I would go, hey, let's figure out all these other puzzles 
that we have to do. And then we can come at this with like a different mindset. I see where he's coming from because yeah, just focusing on one thing instead of multitasking could probably be good. But here's my rebuttal. Why plug away at something if you're stuck on it? And I'm not talking about, ah, oh, this is a little bit hard, let's leave it. Trying everything that you can do to solve one thing with a couple different minds and if after a little bit you guys have explored every single possibility that could help this and you still don't have an answer if you keep pushing you're gonna deplete yourself of mental energy that you could take and use elsewhere to maybe solve something else I just think leaving a problem for a second collecting yourself and then going back to it with a fresh set of eyes or even a new perspective is going to yield way better results than me slamming a locked jewelry box with a wooden teapot also asking for help. Escape rooms and life, ask for help. And I know I just mentioned not pushing through all the time. Here's my rebuttal to myself. <laughs> I wanted to quickly talk about discipline, which I guess is different than pushing through. So I have one friend that every time we talk about business and video ideas, we both get so antsy and excited to implement everything that we talked about. And then as soon as we're away from each other, they just completely diminish. That's where discipline comes in. I have learned with the lack of inspiration that we are not at the mercy of inspiration as much as we think that we are. Yeah, it helps and it's the fueling thing that makes everything great, but there are ways to get around it until inspiration comes back. It's like you and inspiration are taking shifts on life. When inspiration is gone, that doesn't mean you stop everything. You still have to do things. It's just you don't have the luxury of a little extra battery. Whether you're a writer or trying to get a six pack, you have to build your foundation off of non-emotional blocks, durable materials that aren't fleeting. That's not inspiration. That's the act of writing a paragraph. That's running a mile when you would rather stay in bed scrolling through motivational Pinterest quotes to get you out of it. When inspiration is gone, you gotta just do it. You'll start building this fail-safe muscle to where you can operate on it and then when inspiration does come in, you can be extra charged and go faster and longer and harder and stronger and all the other adjectives that Kanye West sings about. Action takes action. Last thing before I want to go, will you allow me to talk about energy? I actually made a letter board that says energy energizes because it does! Have you ever had a friend that brings you down every time you see them because their whole aura is just a little bit slummy? And conversely, have you ever had a friend that every time you see them, you just get lifted because they're such a light? I feel bad for past me and anyone that had to work around me directly because sometimes when I get stressed, I don't even look people in the eye because I'm so internally trying to figure it out that I can't even function. And then I heard the phrase energy energizes. If you're in a group and as soon as there's one person that's a little bit negative, it brings the entire group down. Whether that's the team that you work with, your co-workers, a person in your friend group, a person in your family, whoever it may be. You know what it's like? It's like Christmas lights. The collective mind is Christmas lights. And one tiny little bulb that decides to not do its job or gets burnt out, guess what happens to the rest of the Christmas lights if it's the ones that I always buy? They all go out. One light goes out, they all go out. So if you're a leader or a coach of a team or a manager of your store and you're responsible for the morale of the whole operation, just remember that everyone is following your lead. You're the one that's setting the example of not only hard work, but the vibe of the whole place. You set the tone across the board. And sometimes we don't have words of inspiration or motivation because, hey, guess what? We're depleted too. But even so, even in those duller moments, you can use sheer positivity to at least fuel yourself into being okay for everyone around you. Don't be that bulb. Misery loves company, but so does lightness. And lightness will always overcome darkness. Next time you're in a situation that feels dull or stale, be that light. Open up the door for everybody else. Everyone take a big breath. You gonna be okay. If you're not a coach or a manager or in a position of hierarchy, think again. Maybe you're not in charge of another person on a corporate ladder, but you are in charge of yourself. And that's where it all starts. You can't pour from an empty cup. So be like Trey Songs and fill it up, fill it up. How am I gonna say everything I just said and end this video with a song about alcohol? She gonna do what she gonna do. But, but, but. This came off kind of advicey, but again, this is just how I feel. And hopefully it's just comforting to know that you're not the only one feeling uninspired sometimes. The people that you look up to the most are going through it the most. If you want more advice, I have an advice podcast called Just a Tip you can check out. I talk about lots of things, mostly relationships, but every now and then we get kind of inspirational questions. So go check that out and I will see you soon.